hearse of Calvary. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the cry to die for me. Sing it with the saints in glory gathered by the crystal sea. On the second, I was lost, but Jesus found me, found the sheep that went astray. Through his loving arms around me, drew me back into his way. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory, gathered by the crystal sea. Let's sing that last. He will keep me while the river rolls its waters at my feet. Then he'll bear me safely over where the loved ones I shall meet. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory gathered by the crystal sea. Pastor. All right. It is good to see you tonight. Glad you're faithful to God's house. I love our services. I love the fact that we can gather. And thank you for being faithful to the Lord. I think it's important to sacrifice our time. Let's have a word of prayer and let's begin the service tonight. Heavenly Father, God, we come before you. Lord, I thank you for those who are joining us on Facebook tonight. God, I thank you for those who are here in your house. God, I do pray for those who are struggling and, Lord, having health problems. Lord, I pray for those who are going through issues and loss of loved ones and pain. God, I pray that you would help us all to be comforted tonight through your word and through this time of worship. God, you deserve all the praise. You deserve all the glory. And I pray that you'll be pleased with what happens in this service tonight. God, help each one of us to surrender ourselves to you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I hope you've had a good afternoon. I hope you've noticed as you walked in, we have our uh, brother Brian is working on this map back here, this world map. He's got it on a board. The plan is to put the board, the, the way he's going to hook it to the board, there'll be some lighting behind it. And um, then we're going to paint the board and have things painted. And eventually it's going to go up here with a phrase above it. And I am looking forward to that, really making this look really nice. And then we've got some banners in the future that will be um, up here. And uh, we'll do some things and uh, looking forward to that. Uh, but pray about that. And uh, I think it'll look really nice in this auditorium. So let's, uh, let's have some testimonies tonight. What is everyone thankful? What has God done for you today? Hey, Miss JC, what are you thankful for? What's that? Family in your church? Okay, that's great. Somebody else tonight. Testimony of praise. Yes, Chase. Amen. Amen. Watching God work in your life, Chase. Praise the Lord for that. Very good. Praise the Lord. Yes, Riley. Your family and your mommy and your church, is that what you said? Yeah. Family, Miles, and Sammy. Her dog, her mom, and her family. Am I included in that? I don't know if there's something wrong there or not, but... Okay, you are thankful for me? Okay, thank you, Riley. We can go on now. Somebody else, testimony of praise, Stoney. Amen. Amen. Yes, it is. Praise the Lord for that. Somebody else tonight? Yes. 
Amen. Amen. Very good. Claim God's promises. He is always there. Anybody else tonight? Testimony of praise before we go on. Yes, ma'am? Amen. 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 Yes, praise the Lord. Somebody else tonight? Testimony of praise before we move on. Yes, ma'am? Amen. 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 I loved it at this funeral. I did this, this uh, yesterday. Um, the son told me his, uh, his mother was saved at a Billy Graham crusade, and he told us about it and explained what she did and where she was. I think it was in Indiana somewhere. This was years and years ago, um, but uh, she was saved and just thinking about eternity in the way God made. What a thought. Um, praise the Lord for that. Anybody else tonight? These have been great. Brother Harold. Amen. Brother Harold walked in with his walker instead of on his uh, chair. So we praise the Lord for that. God is going to, God's going to do a work there, Brother Harold. Keep praying, keep working. Amen. Somebody else? Yes, ma'am. For your dad? Amen. Wonderful. Yes, ma'am. Amen. We're glad you're here. Praise the Lord. That's great. Good. Anybody else tonight? These have been wonderful. I love testimonies. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Yes, Quest. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many of you are thankful tonight for the Bible? Just the fact that we have the truth. We don't have to question. We don't have to wonder. We have the absolute truth from God. I don't have to think about eternity because I already know. <laughs> he explained it to me. I don't have to do a bunch of good things to get there. I love that. That's kind of been the theme tonight. Anybody else tonight? I don't want to hold anybody off here. All right. Take your hymnals. Go to hymn 539. Let's sing Rescue the Perishing, hymn 539. We'll sing the first, second, and last verse. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Snatch them in pity from sin and the grave. Weep for the erring one, lift up the fallen. Tell them of Jesus the mighty to save. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Though they are sliding him, still he is waiting, waiting a penitent child to receive. Plead with him earnestly, plead with him gently. He will forgive if they only believe. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Rescue the perishing, duty demands it. Strength for thy labor the Lord will provide. To the narrow way, patiently win them. Tell the poor wanderer a Savior has died. Rescue the perishing, care for the dying. Jesus is merciful, Jesus will save. Pastor. All right. Pray about Wednesday night, Lord willing, we're going to have another missionary video. Um, pray that things will go well with our technology. We'd like to 
um, I just uh, I messaged and talked on the phone with um, our missionaries in Peru, and he is going to, uh, Lord willing, we can make it work out this Wednesday. I'm going to text him and see if that will work. Um, but pray for that. I'd love to have that happen. But we have just a few announcements tomorrow night at 6:30. Mark the time difference, ladies. There is a ladies Bible study tomorrow night, 6:30, right here at the church. Just bring a Bible, a notepad, a pen. Take some time away from your house. Come and just study the Bible together um, and uh, study what God has to say. We do need a um, couple more people to make some desserts for Thursday. Uh, we're going to serve and uh, volunteer at our um, local mission. And those of you who would like to participate in handing out the drinks and handing out the food, um, let me know. We can only have a certain amount go, um, but if you would like to help with that, I think we need a couple more people who will volunteer for that. Um, but let Miss Renee know um, and uh, pray about that. May 15th, I need several of you to be here for our church work day. Um, I am not the church. We are the church. I cannot keep up with everything that goes on in this property. Several people help, but I need help. When we have a church work day, I need people to take it seriously. There is a lot of work on this property. There are a lot of things that are falling apart. You see it when you walk up. There's parts that are missing on the buildings. I can't do it all. I need help. So we have these work days, and I ask people, and several of you already do. Uh, I know some physically can't, and I understand that. But if you can be here to help, I need you here on May 15th at 11 o'clock. I understand we're having a, a ladies are having the baby shower, and that's fine. But I need several people to help. Um, we've got some big projects to do. I really need you to help out with that and be a part of that. Uh, May 28th and um, maybe May 29th, that Saturday, but for sure the 28th we'll have a church rummage sale. If you'd like to bring some things for that, uh, make sure you start bringing them in um, and we'll put them down that hallway. Um, just, just so you know, if it gets donated to the church, it's the churches. Don't get offended with what the church does after that. We are putting it in the rummage sale to sell, uh, but we've got so much uh, stuff that some will have to be thrown away that we've had in the past, um, some, some stuff. So just if you have questions about that, you can ask me. Ushers, go ahead and come forward. Okay. There is an invitation for the baby shower for Aaron. It's on the table out in the lobby, correct? So ladies, grab one uh, and be a part of that. Um, also, there's a possibility our church will be doing a funeral dinner this week. That's not for sure yet. It is just I'm going to offer it. And um, if you would be willing to, um, the church will provide the main meal, but I need some people who might be able to help with that. Um, bringing food, maybe help be here and serving. I don't have the date for the funeral. All we're going to do is offer it as a church. So if you are willing to do, do I have some people that'd be willing to make a meal, uh, something? Just raise your hand so I can kind of get an idea. If you'd be willing to help with some of that. Okay, a few people, that gives me an idea. Uh, Ms. Renee will look around. Um, and we don't have an exact time, but if we need you, we will call you. And I would really appreciate if you can help with that. So, um, there are um, pictures from our, our Easter Sunday that we have ready to go. So if you have not received those yet, I think they're sitting in my office. We've got a few more. So Sean, would you ask God to bless the offering? And let's take it up this evening.
All right, next turn your hymn books to page 547. 547. Let's all stand one last time this evening as we sing Living by Faith. 547. I care not today what tomorrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth o'er everything, and all of my worry is vain. Living by faith in Jesus above, caring confine. Need in his great love. From all our safe in his sheltering arms, I'm living by faith and feel no alarm. On the second, though tempests may blow and the storm clouds arise, obscuring the brightness of life. I'm never alarmed at the overcast sky. The master looks on at the strife. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting confining in his great love. From our heart safe in his sheltering arm, I'm living by faith and feel no alarm on that last. Our Lord will return to this earth some sweet day. Our trials will then all be o'er. The Master so gently will lead us away beyond that blessed heavenly shore. Living by faith in Jesus above, trusting confining in his great love. From our heart safe in his sheltering arms, I'm living by faith and feel no alarm. Good singing this evening. Please remain standing for the reading of God's word. Of Galatians, the book of Galatians. The book of Galatians, if you don't have a Bible, there should be one in the pew in front of you. I explained to our teenagers this morning, I want everybody to look at the Bible so it's not coming from me. You're seeing it. If these truly are the words of God, which I believe with my whole heart, they are important. They are very important. And I definitely don't want to miss it. Galatians chapter... I said we're going to be in chapter 6. I, I just felt this afternoon we need to go over a couple things in chapter 5 again. I don't think we've finished that completely. So let's look over these verses again. We talked very briefly last week about some of these verses. Galatians chapter 5, look down at verse 24. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Now, that's happened. That's an experience. That is something that has taken place. Now, verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now, verse 26. And I believe this is a very dangerous thing that happens in churches. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. I think there's some issues that can be avoided when we take into account certain things that we need to keep in our minds and in our thoughts. So I want to go over some of these verses once again tonight, and I hope it'll be a help and maybe clear up some misunderstanding and misconception that we have about certain things. Let's have a word of prayer, and uh, let's uh, jump in. We'll have the special, then we'll jump into God's Word tonight. Brother Stoney, would you have a word of prayer for us this evening?
Since I started for the kingdom, since my life he controls, since I gave my heart to Jesus, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Even more that I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Every need he is supplying, plenteous grace he bestows. Every day my way gets brighter, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. You serve him, the longer you draw closer to him, it just gets sweeter, doesn't it? My word, what a blessing. Praise the Lord for the singing. What a blessing it is. I love to get to walk with the Lord and Lord willing, teach my children to walk in the Lord and to learn to have a relationship with Him. This week, as we were um, having our, our prayer time uh, one evening this week, I don't remember what evening it was, but as a family, we got Lukey and Riley, we all go to the couch, and we all kneel at the couch generally. Sometimes we'll do it in our, our bedroom by our bed, but generally we'll all go on the big couch, and we'll all go up, and we'll say, Lukey, we're going to pray. And Riley will come over, and Lukey will run from wherever he's at, if we bribe him with food. But he'll run up there, and we'll say, all right, Lukey, we're going to pray. Riley, we're going to pray. And uh, so we'll all get down, and we'll figure out who's going to pray. And sometimes I'll ask Riley, who, who do you want to pray first? And she's got an opinion about everything, so she will tell us. Um, she'll tell us who's going to pray first. And then we'll have, you know, generally Quest or I will start, and then Riley will pray in the middle, and then the other will pray. And we'll try to tell Lukey to pray. And of course, Lukey doesn't understand it, but it's something, it's something. Something we're trying to instill in Lucas that prayer time is important. Now, Lukey gets up and he moves around, and generally he'll start pulling quest hair or jumping on me or doing something. Or and then when you know when we're trying to get his attention, we'll say, Lukey, close your eyes. He doesn't know why we're closing his eyes. He doesn't know what we're doing, but it's a discipline that we're trying to instill in our children now. Now, Lord willing, one day Riley will learn why we pray and who we're praying to. And one day Lucas will learn. But it's something we're trying to instill now. So they know that daddy and mama practice it. And then later on, when they start getting older, they start practicing it on their own. You see, it's a discipline that we're starting now. That's why I believe it's so important. Christian people... We talked about in the youth group, didn't we, Colin, this morning, about sin and the effects of sin. And we talked about one way to defeat sin is to have proper discipline in our lives. When we fully indulge in as much TV as we want, as much phone time as we want, as much entertainment as we want, it's hard to get discipline. Therefore, we set ourselves and we say, 
no self, we're going to do this. Self, we're going to do this at this time. This time is church, we go to church. This time is prayer time, we pray. This time is Bible reading, I read my Bible. It's a discipline, even though you say, Pastor, I'm not getting anything out of my Bible, I'm disciplining myself and showing God that I'm serious. Now, here in the book of Galatians, we find he is talking about circumcision particularly, but look back very briefly as we go through some of this in chapter 3. You remember? we see Paul is declaring his position. Paul is showing them that his message did not come from people, did not come from others. It came from God Almighty. And then we see in chapter 3, in verse 3, are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? It was a question in verse 3 of chapter 3. Now look down at verse 11. Everybody look at verse 11 and see what it says. That no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. You are not justified by the law. You are justified by faith. But it says it is evident for the just shall live by faith. Now we see he goes into this and he gets into other things in chapter 4. He talks about the covenant and Abraham and Isaac. He talks about those things, disapproves the, 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 some of the th teaching that was coming their way. We get to chapter 5 and then we see this contrast in verse 16. This I say then, what's that phrase? Walk in the Spirit. Now, this is part of discipline that we have to have in our lives. And friend, can I just be honest? I, I, what you hear from me is my heart. I don't put on a show up here. I have to work at this so hard. The command to walk in the Spirit so I will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Have you ever heard of a, uh, uh, I heard this story of a, a pastor that got up in the pulpit and he had a Band-Aid on his face and he got up there and he apologized to the church. He said, I was thinking about my sermon this morning while I was shaving and uh, I wasn't paying attention and I cut myself. Well, after the service, the treasurer found a note that had come in the offering plate and somebody anonymously said, next time, think about your face and cut the sermon. <laughs> Wanted the sermon shorter, wanted a little bit, wanted a little bit less, cut out that sermon, cut a little bit more out of it. We see in chapter 5 and verse 16, we see the command. Listen very closely. The devil loves, and we're, I know I'm reviewing, the devil loves inactive Christians. He loves Christians that are sitting on the sidelines. Amen? Does everybody agree with that? Inactivity is from God, true or false, as for a Christian. False! Did we not read this morning, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works? Amen? So we know that we as Christians, we all understand this tonight. It is a command. The devil loves inactivity. If he can get you to do nothing to further the kingdom, he's achieving his goal. So we see this command. Walking is a consistent step in the will and direction of God. Colin, would you help me for a minute? Would you just come up and stand right here? Would you help me? Put you on display here. Okay, so Colin is just your average guy. He's born, he's living, he's doing his thing. He's just, you know, having a time in life. He's just doing the best he can with what he has. Well, one day, Colin is walking through life. Okay, back here. Let's back up a little bit. You get born. Okay, he's born, right? He's born. He's a little baby. Can you cry? No, don't do that. All right, don't embarrass yourself. All right, come over here. You know, 5, 10 years old, 12 years old. He gets a little farther in life, and somewhere in life, Colin is confronting, the Holy Spirit puts it upon his heart, that he is a sinner, he's lost, and if he dies, he spends eternity in hell. So Colin humbles himself, he repents of his sin, he accepts Jesus as his Savior. Now, we're going to talk about that here in just a minute. Would you sit down? I'm going to use you here in just a second. Now, we see see in our passage of Scripture in the book of Galatians, we see this command. And then we see, look at verse 17. Verse 17 of chapter 5. I know I'm reviewing, I understand that, but I want us to get these concepts down very clearly. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. 
We talked about this before. There's a battle fighting inside everybody, every single person, those who are saved. There's something that is fighting the flesh. We talked about the nature of the flesh before. But we see a conflict. Not only do we see a command from God through Paul, there's a command. We're not to be inactive. We're to be walking in a consistent step in the will and direction of God. How do we know if we're in consistent step with the will and direction of God? Well, His Word. It's our guide, right? This is what we follow. Amen? This is how we know. Now, if we know where that is the command, we understand there is a conflict. And this is why we discipline ourselves. We as Christians ought to be disciplined people. Now we see this conflict and then look at verse 18 of chapter 5. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. We see our concern is that we're being led by the Spirit. Tomorrow, my concern is not other things. They shouldn't be. My concern should be, am I being led by the Spirit? Am I following the will of God? Is the Holy Spirit directing me? This is why we have to repent of our sins. Because if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. There's a disconnect there. This is why we need to be right with God. This is why we need to spend time with God. This is why it is so important. Because if we're going to be led by the Spirit, we have to be willing to listen. Now, Paul points out in verse 19 and 20 and 21, the works of the flesh. This is what happens with the flesh. Now, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Read them with me in verse 19 through 21. Read them out loud. Here we go. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Stop right there. Now, he gives us a list. Now, this is not in its entirety. Obviously, there's other things that he could add, but he goes, and we talked about this list before. It covers different areas of our life. He said, this is not Holy Spirit-led lives. This is not it. Now, we get to verse 22 in contrast. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. We see Paul said there's a command. Walk in the Spirit. That's commanded by Almighty God. We see a conflict. All of us are aware there's a battle going on. This is why we discipline ourselves so we do what's right. And then we see our concern is to be led by the Spirit. Why? Because the flesh. This is natural for the flesh. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I, nobody has to teach you to do bad, do they? We're pretty good at that, right? Nobody has to come along and say, Ben, now let me show you how to get angry. I'm pretty good at that myself. Just ask Quest. We see these things are there. But he said, in contrast, the fruit of the Spirit, these things that should come as a result of who you are. And I understand there's counterfeit fruit that can feel very real at times. You can feel, man, I'm happy. I must be a Christian. No, there can be counterfeit fruit. Sometimes we get solace in the fact that, okay, I'm okay today. Flesh is the corrupt nature of the body. Once again, the command to walk in the Spirit. The word walk in the Spirit, the term is to march in conformity. To march in conformity. This is an action verb. This is going out of our way to live a certain way. It's going out of our way. It's understanding the flesh is fighting. Understand that God told me to walk in the Spirit. Understand I need to be led. So tomorrow, tonight when I leave here, I'm going to live a certain way. My former pastor up at at First Baptist, he always said, this was his statement, I love it, and I don't know where he got it, but he said, take the high road to holiness. If you're not sure, don't do it. If it could lead others to sin, don't do it. If it hurts somebody else, don't do it. Take the high road to holiness. Now, we see this action verb. So notice in verse 24, we're going to pick up here. Notice in verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Now, we talked about last week, this was event, an event that has taken place. Okay? So, Colin, come up here for a minute. This is where we're at in Colin's life. Colin, let's go back to being born. 
You're not born again yet, but you're born, right? Yep. You're growing, you're living your life, you're doing your thing, you're having a good time, you're loving it. One day, either you heard a preacher, somehow the Holy Spirit's working on your heart, and you know in your heart you're going to die and spend eternity in hell. And you confront that, and you realize you're a wicked sinner. You re realize that you have messed up, and you do not have peace with Almighty God. So you humble yourself. You admit that you're a sinner. You say, man, those sins, they, 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 they cut me from God. I cannot have a home in heaven because of my sinful nature. I don't want to live that life anymore. I don't want any of that. God, you sent your son to die for me. I accept you as my Savior. And he humbles himself. And it's, by the way, folks, it's not the prayer that saves. I always iterate that, reiterate it, and reiterate it because we, we have this thing. If you say this prayer, you're saved. That didn't do it. That doesn't do it. I'm okay with you saying a prayer. I said a prayer as an 11-year-old boy, but it was something that took place inside of me. Now Colin is saved. Notice, stand right there, Colin. Just look beautiful for a minute. In verse 24, they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. There's a time and place where they've recognized their position. There's a time and place. Look at Romans chapter 6. Take your Bible to Romans 6. I'm going somewhat quickly through these. But these are concepts we have to understand as a church. We must understand this concept. In chapter 6, in verse 1, Paul talks about, you know, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. No, no, that's not how we should live. But in verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth... We should not serve sin. We should not serve sin. So at some point in Colin's life, if he's truly one of God's children and he got saved and there was a time and place where he accepted Christ as his Savior, which there has been for Colin, there was a time where he made an adjustment. I'm, I'm no longer this. I don't identify with my sinful nature. I accepted him. I identify with him like we talked about this morning. You can go sit down. I'll have you come back up if I need you again here. We see that there was an adjustment that takes place. Sometimes, after the adjustment we are born again, along the way, we have to make little adjustments in our lives. You say, what do you mean by that? If you're being led by the Spirit, the Spirit's going to put things on your heart whether it be in a service, whether it be in your private Bible study. You say, Pastor, why do I have an altar call? I don't have an altar call to see how many people will come forward to take a picture so we can put on Facebook and say, hey, look at our church, we're all submissive. No, no, no. We take time so we can respond if the Holy Spirit speaks to our lives. We take time so if you're there and you know in your heart the Holy Spirit is saying you need to quit doing that. My friend, it is vital that you respond. It is vital that you make a change, make a little adjustment. Now we see in this chapter of Galatians, they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. There was a time and place with the affections and lusts. There was a time, crucified, we identified with Christ. Now look at verse 25. Now if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Now Paul's mentioned this multiple times, so mention it in the book of Romans. Do you think it's a big deal? I do. And the more I read it, and the more I study it, and the more I try to understand it, walking in the Spirit is a lot bigger than just showing up and maybe reading a scripture, trying to understand something every once in a while. It is a constant awareness that I belong to Him. What I'm about to do, the Holy Spirit lives inside of me and is with me. Almighty God who is perfectly holy sees what I'm about to do. And then because of that, I take principles from God's word and I understand that I need to be led by these principles according to his word. Holy Spirit living. Now if Jesus has gained the victory, I love this, I love this, uh, this quote I read. Remember, you are not fighting as a saved individual for the victory but because of Christ's victory. I'm not fighting to try to figure out how to get there. Aren't you glad for that? Jesus did that for me. I am fighting as a born-again believer because of his victory. 
That's why I love the, the, the songs, the hymns that talk about the blood, that talk about the cross. Why do we sing with such passion and purpose? Why? Because we know he already has the victory. <laughs> we don't have to figure out to do something for that victory. Listen to this. It is those who are saved, those who have the Holy Spirit inside of them. It is not a freedom to simply indulge in trying to satisfy our sinful desires. On the contrary, true salvation and freedom from the Old Testament ritual law, which Paul was talking about here, is freedom from being controlled by our sinful desires. People who are unsaved, they, it is okay for them to follow their wicked desires. They don't, have a new, they don't have the Holy Spirit inside of them to guide them. A born-again believer does not have the freedom to say, God, thank you for grace. I'm going to live my way now. Oh, quite the contrary. True salvation and true faith in the Lord Jesus Christ is the fact that no longer do we have to earn it. We are serving Him. The Holy Spirit, listen, gave you the power to overcome your sinful desires. I have the power to overcome my sinful desires through the Holy Spirit. I love that. I love it. I love that the sins that I commit, the sins that I say, man, I, oh, I, man, why do I lose my temper? Why do I lie? Why do I do this? Why do I think this? Why do I do that? The Holy Spirit gave me power to have victory over that if I'm being led by the Holy Spirit. Now, Colin, come back up here. This, this will help us get a, a good picture of this here. Everybody needs to understand this. He got saved, right? He's born again, right? Yeah. Okay, just make sure. All right, he got saved. He's born again. Now, Colin still has the man that grew up. Let's say you're, let's say you're 25. Can you be 25 for a minute? Will you give us the 25 look? Yeah, look 25. That's how 25-year-olds look, all right? Right there. Good job, Colin. Now, he's 25. Now, he's got 25 years behind him of life he lived, amen? Decisions he made, things that he's done. He's got those 25 years. Now, he got saved and he got right and the Holy Spirit came to live inside of him. And now this is the battle that is taking place. Colin likes this life. Oh, no, 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 no. This is, this is what I'm supposed to do. Oh, man, that's kind of hard, man. It's hard to read, man. It's hard to do that. And it's this battle back and forth because his flesh keeps wanting to say, and this is what happens, folks. This is why we have to be on guard and have discipline because the habits of the past, the flesh that is still in us, one day aren't you glad we're going to have victory over all that in heaven? I'm so glad we're not going to keep this flesh in heaven. Oh my goodness, I can't wait for that day. But now I have to fight. Not for the victory, but because of the victory. Now, Colin has decisions to make in his life. He's got two ways he can go. And generally, this is what happens. Little by little by little by little. Oh, he's saved. Oh, Colin, got, Colin can remember this time he got saved. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Then one day, Colin's like, oh, man, I'm doing wrong. I'm not being led by the Spirit because the Spirit would not be leading me this way. Therefore, I'm away from God. And then Colin starts to love reading his Bible a little more. Colin starts to put discipline in his life to protect him from sins that he knows he's done in the past. And Colin starts getting closer to the Lord and closer to the Lord and closer to the Lord. His walk becomes better. He starts to become a more joyful person. He starts to love to worship the Lord. Yeah, that's his joyful bounce. He loves serving. He loves worshiping. And my goodness, by now, he's on fire for Almighty God. He's telling everyone he knows about Christ. He's telling everyone about the testimony of what Christ did for him here. Oh, he may have some scars from maybe getting a little mixed up in the world again and doing what he used to, but he's excited because now he's walking, he's growing, he's using his past to tell people of the victory God has given him. This is exciting, right? This is how our life should look. But too often, you tonight, get this really closely, church, and I know I'm talking to Sunday night people, you guys are here, you guys are tired, you've worked hard. You are going one way or the other. You are not stagnant. Everyone in this room is either being led by the Spirit or led by their flesh. You can sit down. 
Here's the hard part of that. Realizing and acknowledging, I'm letting my flesh lead. Paul is talking to a church and churches in Galatia. And I understand he's talking about salvation from Old Testament law and Old Testament rule. But Paul understands that there's a battle that is being fought. And he'll explain that in the book of Romans. He gets it. But there's very little acknowledgement. My friend, it is not a freedom to indulge in satisfying our sinful des- excuse me, our sinful desires. It involves adjusting our pace. Listen, adjusting our pace in life to match the direction the Spirit is leading. Some of us need to slow down. We're getting ahead of God and we're dragging God along. Some of us need to speed up. We're just doing our thing, and man, it's all right. We need to speed up. Some of us need to swerve. (laughs) Some of us need to start weeping before it is too late. The Spirit put into us when I yield. When Paul left the churches in Galatia, no doubt he had confidence that they would do what was right as he left them. But as he writes this book, he understands that there was some misconception for lack of a better term, miscommunication by some of the Jewish leaders, and they told them some certain things. Now let's look at verse 26. And we're going we're gonna to wrap this up with this verse. Here's some things that Paul wanted to warn them about. Let us not be desirous of vain glory. Now as he wraps up this, the, the, these verses here, before I understand there weren't the chapters back then, uh, the division back then, but as he wraps up this thought on the fruit of the Spirit, he says, let us not be desirous of vain glory. Paul understood that sometimes Christian people become conceited. <laughs> we start to get to a point where we're like, man, we can do this. And I'm not even going to try to pronounce the, the, the Greek word for the, this word vain glory, but it's the idea of proud or vain. It's the idea of boasting or vaunting or promoting ourselves. Paul says, be careful. Don't think you're superior to others. Don't seek honor from those things which do not possess moral good. Paul understanding who he's talking to. Sometimes we become conceited. And sometimes we think, oh man, it's going good. I'm following the Spirit. and Man, things are going well. And I know more than everybody else now. Be careful about vain glory. Be careful about this becoming too big. Thinking we are wiser. This happens in churches. Sometimes we think we are wiser or more valuable to the church than so and so. Oh, I'm I'm more spiritual than them, so I should do this. We start to get conceited. Paul says, be careful of this vain glory. This is an understanding that certain people God has gifted in a certain way. Some can sing better. Some can teach better. Some, can, uh, some have abilities in this area or that area. There are certain people we do not want up here <laughs> singing. <laughs> not because we don't want them to worship the Lord, but to lead the congregation. <laughs> some of you are waving your hand. Some people are not gifted with singing. Some people are not gifted with teaching. So there are certain gifts that you may not have. But sometimes it's easy to say, man, look what God gave me. I'm more valuable to the church than you are. Oh, be careful of this vain glory. Be careful, number two, of this provoking one another. The Bible tells us to provoke to love and to good works. So obviously that's not what Paul was saying. This would be the idea of provoking to call forth to challenge to someone. When we are in a position, maybe through vain glory, it is easy to provoke someone to sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 tells us, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There's a story at a tea for officers in the military and their wives, the commanding general of a base delivered a, to most people a seemingly endless oration. A young u- lieutenant grumbled to the woman sitting beside him, what a pompous and unbearable old windbag that slob is. The woman turned to him, her face red with rage. Excuse me, lieutenant. Do you have any idea who I am? No, ma'am. The man fumbled and tried to find words to say. I am the wife of the man you just called an unbearable old windbag. Oh, said the lieutenant, very embarrassed and a little worried. Do you have any idea who I am? The lieutenant said to the woman. No, said the general's wife. 
Good, said the lieutenant, getting up from his seat and disappearing in the crowd. We find that sometimes we become conceited that we could do something better, so we talk bad about the person. We provoke, uh, we provoke someone to do something wrong. Then notice lastly, he says this, envying one another. Paul understanding who he's talking to. This envy can completely destroy someone. It's a sin of the heart. It is put to us by our culture. Jealousy, the fear of losing something that you feel already belongs to you. Covetousness is the idea of desiring for something that is not mine and is not attainable by legitimate means. Envy is a desire for something not mine and begrudging the person who possesses it. It is the feeling of displeasure produced by witnessing or hearing of an advantage or prosperity of others. My friend, this is something Paul warned about. He said, be careful about vainglory. Be careful about becoming conceited, if you will. Be careful about provoking someone that may fall into sin. But be careful about envy. Notice back in verse 21, envies was one of the words used. I understand they're a little different word. This envy happens. I hate someone else for having that. Do you ever get upset because somebody else is doing well? Do you ever get a little frustrated, a little jealous, a little envious? Examine your heart for this sin. Because you know what these three things lead to? Vainglory, provoking one another, and envying one another in a church. It leads to a lack of unity and conformity. My friend, as we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and we allow God to lead us step by step, there's a constant awareness that God is in control. God is leading. I'm okay with him. I've, I've uh, repented of my sin. I'm right with him. And Paul warns for these things. Be careful of conceit because conceit can lead to us provoking someone to sin. That can lead to us envying someone. Be careful of these things because that will cause in our church Lack of unity, a lack of functionality, if you will, a lack of the Holy Spirit's power. If you're guilty of these things, repent. This can cause a church to have many problems. There's a church down, way down south, I forget what state it's in, that had a um, pastor told of the story of uh, some people in the church got upset because there were three or four families they were very gifted. They could play instruments. They could sing. They did most everything in the church. And when these other families wanted to be a part, those families kind of, you know, just kept their nose in the air. And this was a very large church, but it was a group of three or four families. And then it was this group of two or three families, I believe he tells the story. And they thought they were something. And they were a little conceited. And they, to be honest, they, they caused some issues in the church. And eventually a church of 900 went down to 300. All because some people started to cause issues. Paul said, if you're spirit-led, these things, that's not going to be you. If you're spirit-led, there's certain things that will not be allowed in your life. There are certain things that you will say no to because you've trained yourself. No, no, no I can't do that. No, 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 I'm not going to have that attitude. No, 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 I'm not going to act like this. Because it will hurt the cause of Christ. Oh, friend, I pray that the fruit of the Spirit is manifest in us not the manifestation of the sins in the previous verses. I pray that because we've crucified the flesh, the affections, the lust, that we're living in the Spirit and by the Spirit and being controlled by Him and led by Him. And then these things, the last three things in verse 26, will not be you. Amen? Heavenly Father, God, we come before you. Lord, I, I feel like that we needed to cover these things again tonight, Lord. Lord, it's too easy. It's too easy to become selfish. It's too easy to become a little envious of what other people have. It's very easy to provoke someone to maybe sin or to an issue. God, it's very easy to think that we've got it together. God, I pray that we will be on guard for this deceit, this vain glory. And that, God, our goal would be that you get all that glory. We would not be envious of one another. We would not provoke each other to sin, but, Lord, to love and to good works. God, I thank you for Jesus. I do thank you for your people. And it's in his name we'll pray these things. Amen.
Let's be faithful to the Lord this week. Um, grab a gospel track as you leave. Tell someone about Jesus. Invite them to come. And uh, if you can help with the mission, let Miss Renee know. And if you can help with that funeral, if we have that dinner, uh, let us know. God bless you. Have a great week.